Hello. So we've just had a new machine in. So this is the Brother F480. So you may have already looked at our YouTube video of the F420, the Brother F420, which is a sewing machine only. This is its sewing machine and embroidery machine combo. So it is the F420 of my other demo and the F440, which is the embroidery machine as one. It's very exciting. So um, if you've just bought the F440, I suggest this is a good one for you to look at after I've done the sewing machine demo. Um, if you've bought the F420, I would watch the F420 video only. But if you're interested in a combined one, this is the um, smallest version of a sewing and embroidery machine that Brother do. So the Innovus F480. So I'm going to start off by showing you some features, what you get in the box, and then we'll do some uh, of the sewing, just having a look how to navigate your way around this. I suppose this is all moving, so let me just push it. Um, and um, how to access all these lovely stitches. And then I'm going to do a little bit of embroidery too. So it's um, a, a computerized machine, which means then that it's not just digital, we've got lots and lots of stitches, but you can also um, save, it will memorize certain things. You can create your own stitches, you can do forward, um, you can do sideways stitching on it. It's quite amazing. Uh, I might even demonstrate that. And um, it's got lots of buttonholes, lovely embroidery or decorative stitches, not the embroidery as in the embroidery bit, but lots of lovely decorative stitches. And it, oh, it's just a really neat setup. So we've got our normal speed control, our scissors, which is just a must these days. We've got our um, stay stitch button, reverse button, and our um, stop start stop button if we didn't want to use our foot pedal. When I'm sewing, I like to use my foot pedal, unless I'm doing things like um, a buttonhole or winding the bobbin, and then I'll take it out. I've got a lovely, easy set in bobbin. Actually, I'm just going to take this out because I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin. So this whole video is literally, if you've just bought one, it will hopefully help you. So this is the sleeve arm. It's also a lovely tray, nice accessory tray with all the sewing um, feet in, the buttonhole foot and various other feet as well. Obviously some spare bobbins. This is our embroidery foot because we'll change that over when we do some embroidery. It also comes on this model, the F480, with a walking foot. See, it's so new, I haven't even taken it out of its wrapping. And this little monster, which is a side cutter. I'm going to do a separate video on the side cutter. Um, but this is like, if you haven't got an overlocker, uh, it does a lovely over edge stitch and chomps away at the fabric. So it's a great little, a great little foot. Um, so that's all nice and neat in there. Uh, I'll keep that out, I'll keep that with my embroidery bits. So, hoops. So it does come with small hoop. Uh, not the smallest hoop, because they do do a Disney um, 280D, which is just a four inch by four inch hoop. So this is a five by seven. It's a fairly decent size hoop. And you'll see later, we can get some nice embroidery on that. It clicks in really, really easily. And then you think, wow, that's a big hoop. But actually what it is, is it's the same method of um, putting it into the um, embroidery frame when we put that on. Um, but it just means that if I wanted to, um, I don't know, write my name, which is Joe, J-O, it would fit in here. But if I wanted to call myself like my mother would, and it would be Joanne, I could put Joanne and it would fill it up. It just means that I have to do the J and the O, and then I have to move the hoop down and to do the A double N E. So that's what that hoop's for. So it's quite clever. But let's do some basic stuff first. So as always, you know, a good thread is always going to enhance your stitches. So we've got a horizontal spool. Uh, push this through. Always remember to take that bit of sticky away because I've had it before where I didn't and it's caught up with my thread and it goes wee all the way through there. And that's not the best thing. 
So secure it, got different sizes of thread um, holders. Probably would be better off with a smaller one, but hey ho, I've got the bigger one now. Um, I had an empty bobbin there. So for threading the machine, we're just following the dotted line. So number one, number two, and then there's another little um, uh, diagram on here and click it through to the bobbin winding tension. So it's that that's gonna make, or gonna give you a perfectly wound bobbin. So I'm gonna pop the bobbin onto the bobbin winder and take my thread. So it's nice and tight here because it's through that bobbin tension. I give myself a good 25 centimeters of thread. I'm taking it behind and then I'm gonna use which thread, the thread that I've got in my hand, just to wind it around a few times in a clockwise um, direction. And then underneath here are some little blades. So I poke it in there, give it a little pull, and then that's it. So now what I'm going to do is push it over to the bobbin winder stopper, which is here. And basically it's going to be good to go, but this is a good opportunity for me to take my foot pedal out there and I can now wind my bobbin. And it's saying winding bobbin thread. There are also lots of um, instructions on here, built in to help you do all sorts of things. I'm just going to call that a day for now. So that's it, I've just switched it off using the start stop button, but I'm going to position my foot pedal back in. Okay, so we then go in reverse, take it over to the left, use the little thread cutter to cut my thread. And then we need to pop our bobbin into our bobbin holder. So there is a right and a wrong way. And the right way is to pop our thread, if I do it on this blue, as a P for perfect. So as long as the thread is looking like a P for perfect, as opposed to a Q for not quite right, we drop it in into here as a P for perfect. And then we need to pop it through our tension. So we just hook it round underneath there, hold the bobbin just so it's nice and taut, and then just get into the groove. And then there's another little thread cutter and that is it. That is the bobbin in, easy peasy, pop that on. We don't need to do anything more about the bobbin. Because we've got um, scissors as well, we don't need to draw up the bobbin thread. So we're going to take this out of the bobbin tension and now we're going to follow the solid line. So we've got number one and number two. It's actually showing us there and now we're going to go left. And then down and then three up and then just hook it round like that and it needs to be in that take up lever and it's naturally done it so down to five then in there to six i'm going to hold my thread at the top just to give it a bit of tension to help it go through there that's it now this is getting ready for the needle threader so here is number seven don't know if you can see i've just poked it through there and then i'm going to cut by clicking it behind and using that blade just to cut the needle thread. So we just need to make sure we do that process, follow the numbers. Now what I do is I put my presser foot down and then we've got a little lever at the side here and I'm just going to push it all the way and that's it. Needle is threaded. You don't actually have to take that loop out but I will do. There we are. So lift the presser foot, poke it through, and we're good to sew. Okay. So I'm just going to do and show you how to navigate your way around this. I'm going to take the volume, uh, the volume, the speed down. Um, and as you see, this is the sewing mode. So this is like having a, an F420. This is just the stitches. So we've got a nice little button here that's always going to find us and see where we want in the um, in the system. As soon as we turn the machine on, it's ready to sew. It's ready to straight stitch, as you see here. But you see here also, there's a little 
numbers that say one of six. So there are six pages of this selection of stitches and we navigate them by using these arrows. So there's page two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then each of them, if you look here, it literally is whatever was in that selection there. It's the same, whatever we've done and gone through, they are the same stitches as there. Okay, so here, if we push it, it brings up the new menu. So if we wanted to do other kinds of decorative stitches, they are literally here. And these little symbols here, see there, it says number two, number three, number four. So if I just take two, three and four and show you on the screen, two, three and four, they're exactly the same. Decorative stitches, more decorative stitches and then buttonholes. So then we've got number five, if we look here, that's our multi-directional sewing, which I will show you. But let's just do some basic stitching to start. So back to number one, it's got a stitch length default of 2.5 and literally as with brother. So our needle is situated over to the left. I don't know if you can see that. So it's situated over to the left. And if we run our fabric on the edge of this foot, that would be a one centimetre seam. So let's just do a little bit of stitching. So I will do that with the fabric on the edge of this foot. So another, another lovely thing about Brother, it won't let you sew unless it's ready to go. So we put our presser foot down. You see it's up, it's on red, it's down, it's on green. It will allow you now to sew. So foot on the foot pedal and there we are so i could do a little stay stitch this is a stay stitch button and i could push it again if i wanted to so literally it's doing a little finishing stitch i could push my scissors and that's cut the thread there we are so that's on a straight stitch so just going to show you then how to um, do some other stitches. I mean, we've just recently done a whole um, little um, stitch out of some, a few of the stitches. Um, but how do we get them? So we push this button here and perhaps I'll go into this decorative stitch here. So we've got four pages. Let's see if I can find something I really like. Oh, that's the doodle. Actually, that's really, really nice. So let's just go into some doodles. So, stitch it out. So this is like a very small version of a, a free machine. -y. So if I um, scissor, I'll show you what that one's like. So it's quite cute. So I'm just going to add a little bit of alphabet. So we've got over here oh it's now telling us to or okay to pencil so okay go into abc i love this bubble writing so let's just do that and then i'll just put in a b c and give that a go so let's stitch that out because of the square drive system you get some really wide lovely patterns and this font in particular is really good Just doing the little secure stitch, press the scissors. I mean, that's amazing size font for such a small machine. I'm going to show you the square feed because you don't get it really until you see it, um, what it actually means. But let's just say you were making a bag and you've got your um, straps to do and you would, you would sew around the straps. So I'm going to pretend that we're going to be sewing around the straps because normally what you'd have to do is sew, you know, down, lift, pivot, move your fabric. With this, we could literally sew a square. So what we need to do is to go into, so OK to cancel. Yes, it is. So the free stitching is this one, number five. So what I'm going to do is come down first, which is this. 
So do a little down and then I want to go across that way. Now this is where the magic happens. It's very weird the first time you do it. So obviously most machines go backwards, but rarely without, you know, in this manner. So we'll go backwards and perhaps one more stitch. I'm just judging this and now we're going to go right. So that's the feed dogs at the, let's speed it down a little bit. So feed dogs underneath that not only move forward and back, they also go side to side, which enables you to do that. Which if you can imagine, if you were quilting, for instance, and you just wanted to go around a few squares, that makes life a lot easier because you don't have to keep lifting and pivoting and moving your fabric. So it's fantastic. So it also comes in a zigzag as well. So you can do a straight stitch or a zigzag. And I think that's a fabulous feature. So let's have a look in our little box of tricks. And here we are, we've got our um, buttonhole foot. So let's access our buttonhole. That's there, okay to cancel. Um, and we've got lots of buttonholes here and lots of darning. Um, there's darning as well and button, a button sewing for, uh, feature. So let's just do a standard buttonhole, which is that one. So I just put this little button. This is the buttonhole foot. So it's saying, also tells you what foot to use. So that says foot A. Very difficult to see on this plastic one, but basically the little A is there. Can you see? So we're just going to open up this buttonhole foot like so. Our button goes in like that, squeeze it nice and tight, and that gives us how big the buttonhole is going to end up. So we take the foot off by pushing the little lever at the back, and then our foot drops off. We were using the J foot, just for example. Uh, there we are, that's the J, it says it in there. So we put our foot on by, and we can lift our presser foot up a little bit further and lining it up and dropping it whoops, down until it clicks in. So there we are. That's our buttonhole foot on. So we've chosen that buttonhole design. We need, now need to find the buttonhole lever or the doobry as I like to call it. And it's a little, you have to find it and pull it down and make sure that it is sitting within that gap that has been created by the button. So pop our presser foot down. It's saying it's ready to sew. This is another machine that if we didn't pull that lever down, in fact, I'll show you, look. So it's it won't sew without the lever, which is a great feature. So there we are. I'm gonna take my presser, uh, my foot pedal out and it will go to green eventually. There we are, it's recognised I've not got the foot pedal in, I'm just going to press start, stop, start, stop. So let's turn this up a bit. There we are, press scissors. So there we are, what I could have done was just held on to that thread first, but there's our buttonhole. I've got a little thread, um, a stitch ripper here as well. So let's push that back out. Get this button out and test it. So with the stitch ripper goes in one side and we just use the blade in the stitch ripper to cut in between those two rows of stitches. Go one side, then the other, because that stops you going zip like that and breaking it. So there's our button. It should be a perfect fit and it looks a pretty perfect fit to me. There we are. So obviously you would always do a test sew of your buttonhole anyway, because you can change these if you needed to. It would depend on your fabric. You might find that you need it closer together or further apart or wider or um, closer together so you can adjust them as well and you would adjust them with this button here up in the top 
hand corner there, that's where you could change your width and your length. And then, yeah, so it's quite an intuitive um, machine. Also, it comes with a fabulous, as with Brother, comes with a fabulous book going through everything. And obviously, because this is an embroidery unit as well, you've got sort of an even bigger manual. But that's good. So we can keep this all nice and neat and pop this back where it should be. Uh, which way does it go? That way. So let's now, I'm going to put this foot on. I think now I can show you how we change it to embroidery unit. And I'm going to just do it um, just to show you how easy it is. So this is the embroidery unit. Now to change between one and the other. So we've been sewing. When we change, we must turn the machine off. So I'm going to turn the machine off at the side there. And then I'm just going to remove the sleeve arm. So obviously this is great if you were doing sewing and need a smaller um, area or to do the edge of trousers or sleeves. So that's, that's what that's for. But it is also to hold our embroidery unit. And this just slides on. That's it, it's on. To take it off, there is a little lever underneath where my right hand is. It goes underneath the bright, um, the embroidery unit and then you literally just pull it off. So it's very, very simple. So if we turn it on again now, comes back up with the screen. It knows that we've got the embroidery unit on. So just yeah, press OK, press tell it what, you know, Whatever it asks you to do, you just tell it. So it's just now got itself sorted and ready for embroidery. So with embroidery, we have to use a bobbin thread. Bobbin thread is a lot finer thread. And you don't have the same colour top and bottom, unless you were doing some kind of lace design. But it does go in the same way, so it's still a P for perfect. So I'm going to take this Gutterman thread out. And then I'm going to use my pre-wound, um, well, it's not pre-wound, I've just wound it. This is a bobbin thread. And get it in, make sure it goes into tension, into the groove, and that's it. So that's our bobbin sorted. Now what we can do is have a little bit of fun with a design. And there's some lovely inbuilt designs. To be honest, this is quite new to me, this machine, so I'm just learning about it. If we just push in, it will tell us, you see, we've got page one of 13 designs and the brother designs inbuilt are gorgeous. Now you can obviously download different designs as well and there's a USB um, point at the side, but just to show you, we can skip through a variety of lovely designs and, oh look, seeing the cocktail there, that might be a good one to do. I'm going to just try, try and find something that's quite simple just to stitch out quite quickly. Oh, we've just had Halloween, so we don't really want that. Um, so this is page 8 of 13. And although they look quite small here, that's what I suggest to anyone who buys a machine, is to stitch everyone out, just so it gives you a good idea of what they look like. So... If I don't see anything there I like, I'm just going to push uh, return and then go into another section. So there's this one here. So we've got 14 pages of designs here. Really nice. Actually, we need to also just show, you know, the different hoops just show the... Um, well, that's a four by four hoop. It doesn't come with a small, small design. So every single design on this that's built in will fit uh, on our hoop. So, was that an ice cream, a robot? Oh, and these are rather nice, look, with the, with the numbers for birthdays, with a candle. But anyway, some lovely designs there. But I really, really like these. So I love the lettering. And I'm going to just do myself a J. So if I push J, there we are. So it can only, look, you see it's saying it won't go into a small hoop, but I'm not using a small hoop and I'm literally just going to set. So here, once I've set it, 
I can change it, I can move it. So I do want it in the middle, but let's just say I wanted to move it down. I can bring it down. I can use my finger to bring it down, or I can use the arrows to help navigate my way. Or if I push the little dot, I'll take it back to the middle. So I can change the size of any design. I can bring it in 20% or take it out 20%. And it's very, very simple just by using these. So if I wanted to make it slightly bigger, if I just push my finger on that, it's taking it up by 20, taking the design up by 20%. So let's just take it down to where it was. Okay. So I could add if I wanted to. I'll probably add a few bits just to show you, but then I'll take them off. Um, but let's just say I wanted to add a little bunny. Now, obviously, that bunny is now quite big to go if I set it first, and then I could move it. But I think it's probably too big and it's going to go over that. Mind you, I could resize it if I wanted to. If I take it down 20%, now it looks as though it's okay. So it would fit in if I wanted a bunny by my J, but I don't. So what I can do is I can, the box is around the bunny, I can just delete it. So I've still got my J there. It would delete the J if I press delete as the box is around it. But I'm hoping to show you how easy it is just to add and um, change things. I could rotate it. I could have it going the other way, possibly. I don't know if I can on this one. Yeah, it will fit that way. In fact, I could fit in Joe if I wanted to, so I might just do that. So if I move that and take that up and then press OK, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to add an O. So there's the O. So set it, but I need to rotate it 90 degrees and also I also need to, I'm going to make that a bit smaller and then, okay, but now I need to move it, bring that down. And then if I take my J and move that bit up. So as you see, I've got a J and an O, but also what I also like about these is it's also got some, in fact, let's go backwards because they're there some little designs that you can add to it. So there's some little flowers. So I can set that and then I can move it up to the far, let's go up there. And they're just little designs that just add to it, but that will probably do for now. So I can now say edit end and then press embroidery. And now it's ready to go. It's going to say it's taking going to take 28 minutes to stitch out. And I've got um, how many colour changes? 16, I think. So I'm going to just show you how we start and then you'll probably we might put it on speed and see. So nice and easy to attach. I've just used a bit of denim here because it's really, really thick. So it doesn't need extra stabilising. And that's the beauty of a um, small hoop because a large hoop even with thick denim I would have to stabilize it but this is a small hoop so it generally um, gets quite stable I need to change the uh, foot to start off with as well and I bet I haven't got a screwdriver over here yes I have but this is probably too big let's see right so with this we have to change the whole foot so we take the whole foot and the whole ankle off. So we've just unscrewed that. And then this is the embroidery foot. So we have to get it set up right. Mm, nope, that goes behind. No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, it goes there. So in there, hand screw it in first. You do need to tighten it with a screwdriver because with embroidery, there's a, a lot of vibrations and um, it will unravel a little bit. So make sure it's nice and tight. I'm not using the best screwdriver of this. It was the one I had to hand. With my machine models, I tend to put 
all the little equipment bits away so as when it does eventually sell it's like brand new so i'm just double checking yeah that's in right so always use a hand wheel just to double check that it's clearing the um, foot so now what we're going to do is to take this and attach it so these are the little um cutouts that are going to go and fit onto these two screws so get it under there and then position it and click it down there that's it all done so we've got our bobbin thread in our first is a pale blue obviously you can put any color in there you like I'm using uh, Madeira embroidery threads, but any good embroidery threads, brother do their own, Janome do their own. Um, and they're generally rayon, so they've, they've got a nice feel to them. I'm gonna thread the machine, same as we do for the sewing, making sure that it's threaded correctly. Uh, I moved that, didn't I? So, pop, press the foot down, there we are. So like I said, we don't have to take that um, little loop out unless you want to. It looks quite big on that one. I think it's because I am going to take the loop out of that one and just cut it a little bit. So with this embroidery machine, it doesn't cut the jump threads. So it's on green. It's good to go. This first one is going to take five minutes to stitch out. And it's like having a new baby. You just It's nice just to watch, but I'm not going to make you watch it for five minutes. We will probably speed this little bit up. Okay, so that's speedy, speedy video. Um, I've only done the J, um, but I'll show you how we get it out just by unclicking this. And there's the J. And as you see, there's some little jump stitches that just need to be just cut off with scissors. I'm going to leave it in the frame because I am going to finish it off. Um, but you can just trim it up. Just take the odd little jump stitches. So it's no big deal. But really nice embroidery. Hope you like that. As you see, that's the start of our J and an O. So really lovely machine. Nice if you're not sure about if um, embroidery is for you. Um, because the sewing machine on itself is fantastic. The embroidery just gives you a little bit of extra scope uh, for your creativity. Even if it's just putting something on a Christmas stocking or you know, embellishing something. So there's lots of opportunities. And because it's not too big a hoop, it makes it really quite easy to manage. The bigger the hoop, the more difficult things uh, become. Um, so this is the Brother F480. It's a sewing machine and an embroidery machine. It's the equivalent of having the F420 sewing machine and the F440 embroidery only machine combined into one. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you'd like to come and try it, Come and visit us in Peacefield in Hampshire. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.